Unit 2, Warnings of Judgment in the Days Before the Flood. So if you look in Hebrews 11, 7, it says, it talks about Noah and it says this, by faith, Noah being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household. And then the verse goes on, but it mentions here that Noah was divinely warned, which we know about, he, and, he, and he acted in accordance with what he was warned. He moved with godly fear and he prepared an ark. Now, it's interesting, if we go over to Second uh, Peter uh, verse, chapter 2, verse 5, it also mentions Noah. And it says, And God did not spare the ancient world, but saved Noah, one of eight people, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the, in the flood on the world of the ungodly. So, what, so here, again, it says the same thing about Noah, right? It says that God saved him from a flood. But here, this is, there's this very interesting little phrase that we don't hear about Noah anywhere else, and that here he says that he was a preacher of righteousness, which is interesting. So he didn't just obey the command, but he was actually preaching righteousness to whoever was looking around. Because you got to imagine how weird that would be for a guy to be building a giant boat in the middle of the, of a land where there was no uh, nearby water source, right? So people, you know, must have thought Noah was weird, but it calls him a preacher of righteousness. Now, it's interesting. There was another character we talked about in the previous module, and that was Enoch. Now, Jude, for, uh, Jude verse 14, there's only one chapter, says this about Enoch. And it says, now, Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied, really important, says prophesied about these men. Well, who, what man? Well, we'll talk about that in a second. But here's the nature of his prophecy. You see, we don't read this in the Old Testament. So this is something we learn from the New Testament revelation about the Old Testament. So he's saying Enoch prophesied, and the nature of his prophecy says, behold, the Lord comes with 10,000 of his saints to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among all of them and all of their ungodly deeds, which they've committed in an ungodly way, and all of the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him, right? Not the most inspiring uh, verse in the, in, the, in the Bible, but nonetheless, he's talking about um, judgment upon certain men. Now, the men he's talking about, he mentions earlier in, ver- in verse 4, where it says, uh, for certain men have crept in unnoticed who long ago were marked out for this condemnation, ungodly men who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So he's talking about people who pollute the message of Christ, but he's he's comparing it to, to the days of Enoch, where Enoch prophesied against the same kind of people who were doing the same kind of thing, who were living in ungodly ways. Now, it's interesting, if we go back to Noah, right, it talks about how he's a preacher of righteousness. And then it talks about Enoch and how he prophesied about judgment, Okay, now what's interesting is that these guys have a couple things in common. For example, if you were to think about, there's, there's a phrase that's mentioned about both of these guys in the early part of Genesis that's not mentioned about anybody else in their line or their genealogy. Can you think of what it is? I'll show it to you in a sec, so check this out. It, it says that they both walked with God. It says Enoch walked with God in chapter 5, verse 24, and it said Noah walked with God in chapter 6, verse 9. It's very interesting. It doesn't say that about anybody else. It says, but about these two guys, it says that they walked with God. So they have that interesting little characteristic about them that's in common. Another interesting thing about that is how God responded to them. What happened to Enoch? If we if we look back, Enoch was raptured. We read in the in the in the genealogy we covered in Genesis five how God translated or just took him up um, in the middle of his life. Now, how did God respond to Noah, another person who walked with God? Well, he was rescued. So here we start to see these interesting things. We have an ungodly generation. We have people who are speaking out against it, and people who were rescued out of it in one way or another. So I think we can infer, right, it's not said directly, but I think we can infer that, that there was a time of warning. People were being warned about the coming judgment. It didn't just, it, it surprised them, but, it, but there were people there who were telling them and warning them um, about it. Now, speaking about Enoch and also about the idea of prophesying about judgment, let me ask this question. Who is Enoch's son? Do you remember? So I, I showed you this slide in the previous module. This was kind of this was the gener- the genealogy that we studied in Genesis five. Genesis five. If you look at it, who is Enoch's son? It is Methuselah. Now Methuselah, of course, has the claim to fame of being the oldest person in the Bible. And we looked at his the, the meaning of his name along with the meaning of the other names. And Methuselah's name has a very interesting meaning. 
Now, without getting into the Hebrew, there's two parts that go together, the idea of being sent and the idea of death, right? So, so sometimes the, it's translated uh, either dying he shall send or he has sent death, something of that nature. Now, what's interesting about Methuselah, especially with the idea of Enoch and prophecy, is that we know that Methuselah is, of course, the longest lifespan recorded in the Bible. So he lived 969 years. But what happened at year 187 of his life? Well, that was when he had a son named Lamech. Now, how long did Lamech live? Well, he lived until he was 777 years. But at year 182 of Lamech's life, what happened in his life? He, had, he also had a son named Noah. Now, what's very interesting is that something, something significant happens at year 500 of Noah's life. Do you remember what it is? It was the fact that he had three boys, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. Then, at year 600, another significant event happens in the life of Noah, and that is the flood. It makes it very clear in the Bible. Now, what's interesting about the Methuselah and this whole thing is that if you just kind of do some math and you take the 187 up to Lamech, and then you take the, the 182 from Lamech to Noah, and then you take the 500 up to Ham, Shem, and Japheth, and then you take the, the additional 100 up to the flood, and if you add them all up, what's fascinating is that you get the exact lifespan of Methuselah, 969 years, which is very fascinating because the flood comes the very year that Methuselah dies. Is that coincidence? Could be. I don't know. But what's interesting is that this idea of the longest lifespan in the Bible also could be seen as a prophecy of Enoch, right? Because it's as though Enoch is prophesying in the name of his son because the longest lifespan in the Bible becomes almost like a symbol of God's mercy for people to repent. He gives them the longest lifespan possible of all the ones recorded. It's like a symbol. Um, but you know, and during the time, I believe that there were warnings. Now, again, this is an inference. It, it's not said clearly, but but clearly God gave people lots and lots of time to to repent. But we know how the story goes, right? The days were evil, people were wicked, and they don't repent. And so God brings the rain. And so in the next unit, unit three, we're going to now take a look at the ark and the flood, salvation and judgment intertwined. <laughs>